All right, everyone. This is uh, Chris, uh, the Ancient Scholar, back again. Uh, just looking at some more uh, uh, video footage of Adam in the Box. So I'm going to just leave off where, uh, or pick up where we left off, rather. And this is going to be um, on the 2S orbital or the 200 um, atomic configuration. And uh, we talked about that. Now, as we know, in the second shell of energy, not only do I have uh, my M uh, sub or my L, rather, my L number can take on more than just a value of zero. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in the same shell, but I'm going to change orbital because we actually have two types of orbitals in the, um, <coughs> excuse me, in the N equals two um, shell of energy. Um, the, in the hydrogen atom, these are known as degenerate orbitals or orbitals with the same exact energy. So the energy is not going to change just the orbital, um, just uh, the, the orientation in, in space, and the magnetic orientation can also change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my L number from 0 to 1, and that will give me a P orbital. Um, you can probably hear that humming, and um, that's just a, a, a sound effect. Um, and I'll go ahead and take that off so I can talk a little easier. Just a sound effect it adds um, is, is you, uh, you have probability density closer, it's a little louder, and probability density further away, the sound gets a little softer. So here we have the 2s orbital, or uh, excuse me, the 2p orbital, um, the 210 configuration, where L equals 1. And you can see that it takes on a dumbbell shape. And what I'll do is I'll just add um, the x, y, z axis there. And what you can see is I uh, have my x and my y and then the z, which is known as the nuclear axis. If I look straight at the z axis, the, uh, in this configuration, this is uh, aligned along the z axis, the 210, uh, the 2pz, or it's called known as the 2pz orbital, aligned right along the z axis there, you can see. Um, now, the interesting thing about the, the p orbitals is they can have, they now have um, what, we, what is known as angular dependence. They're not, no longer spherically symmetric. They're actually two lobes, kind of dumbbell shaped. So my nodes, or my areas of zero probability, cannot, not only may they, they have um, radial uh, dependence, but they can have some angular dependence as well. You can see me kind of um, switching this around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my m sub l from 0 uh, to 1. And I can also make it negative 1 if I want because there are actually three p orbitals, right? There's the um, x, y, and z. Now, in reality, so this is what the, uh, the z orbital looks like. And uh, here we have a p orbital. This is a 2, 1, 1, still a 2p, um, but it looks very different, does it not? It doesn't look like the dumbbell. And I know that a lot, and a lot of times people are say people tell you, oh, all p orbitals look like dumbbells. Well, that's not exactly the case. What we do, uh, because the circular orbital is is a little more difficult to work with in chemistry and bonding and all that, is what we'll do is we'll take linear combinations of the wave function, and make these other two. I'll make this number uh, negative one, and you can see how it has kind of this circular uh, look to it as well. We can take and we can do linear combinations. And of, of the um, wave functions and actually make all of our p orbitals look like, th like this. Um, and that just makes it a little bit more convenient uh, for chemists when we talk about chemical bonding. Okay, guys, uh, more videos to come. Thanks for hanging in there.